in Santa Cruz, let me give you a brief history, um, and then I'll try to get to David's questions. In about 1996, just after we had the peak in juvenile arrest rates in, in California, um, Santa Cruz, like all counties in, in California, found the, the local juvenile hall to be really overcrowded. We have a capacity, we have about 250,000 population in Santa Cruz County, and the uh, capacity of our juvenile hall is 42. And we were running a population of about um, 65 kids on any given day. And so young people were sleeping uh, on the floor with their heads uh, by, the, by the toilet. And um, we had tried really hard to do something about that, but we just didn't seem to be able to find our, our way out of it. Um, so in uh, 1997, John Rhodes, who had been a deputy chief in Sacramento County and had been, had been involved in the Juvenile Detention Alternative Initiative funded by the Annie E. Casey Foundation in Sacramento, um, came to Santa Cruz as the new chief. And he brought with him really uh, the toolkit that he had and the lessons that he had learned uh, from his work in Sacramento County. And he found in Santa Cruz, uh, I think, a group of um, next level managers and certainly policy makers who were willing to listen to the message that he brought and, and the, the lessons that he wanted to teach. And uh, we developed um, uh, a core working group at that time to implement the Juvenile Detention Alternative Initiative. And we did so without any outside funds over the next two or three years. So this is one of my messages today, is this is something that doesn't take money to do. This is something that you can do um, yourself. So um, we began our work um, to try to reduce our reliance on, on detention without um, compromising public safety in any way, and we've been very successful in doing that. Um, today our average daily population in the juvenile hall is about uh, 16, our average length of stay is uh, 7 days, and um, we do not send kids uh, to the youth authority or to group homes or to other out-of-home placements because we're committed at the deepest level to keeping kids at home and in their communities. And um, the way that culture change happens is to really hold yourself accountable um, for, the, for, for good outcomes. And so we measure every single thing we do. And we've invited, we try to have a very porous juvenile justice system. We couldn't do this without the help of um, agencies and individuals who come from the community. And these are our very closest partners. Um, when they criticize us, we listen. We don't try to formulate a rebuttal in our mind as they're talking. And uh, when, they, when they tell us what the experience is like for them uh, in the formal justice system, we really try to attend to what they are saying um, because they, they are speaking the truth. And um, we do a lot of connection with kids and parents and with community groups uh, who come in and out of both our juvenile detention facility um, but also are involved throughout the continuum of services. So we've had to build a very robust uh, community-based response for this. And I have to say we've been helped in doing that um, in the late, um, in the early, late 90s and early 2000, year 2000, um, by some funding that came from the state, both the um, TANF funds that some of you have heard about, but also the Crime Prevention Act funds that have come to local probation departments. Without those funds, uh, it would be very difficult to do that. And a lot of probation departments throughout the state have in fact taken those funds. Some have kept them for themselves and they use them for secure detention. Others, however, have put them out into the community and, and created um, a, a better outcome for young people. 